It is an exciting time to be playing Legends of Runeterra, but joining a competitive card game after its launch can be difficult. So how can you make your transition into the game be as smooth as possible when there's a bunch of regions and cards that you're unfamiliar with? Today I'm going to go over each of the regions currently available in the game to help you figure out their respective playstyles so you can dive deep into the game with a strategy that best suits you while you get acclimated with the mechanics of the game. As of March 3rd, 2021, there are currently 9 regions available in the game. The current regions are Demacia, Noxus, Piltover and Son, Freljord, Ionia, Shadow Isles, Bilgewater, Targon, and the newly released Shurima. Let's dissect them one by one and see what they offer to Legends of Frontera. Demacia is a region with a long military history filled with a lot of nobles and a great focus on the ideals of honor, duty and justice. Demacia doesn't look kindly upon mages, as it was founded as a refuge from magic after the Rune Wars. In order to translate this into Legends of Frontera, this region has a lot of low cost units that can be buffed and turned into forces to be reckoned with. As this is a region that fears magic, there are a lack of damaging spells from the region, and it mainly relies on combat to defeat the enemy. The Demacia region has a focus on setting up an early game to secure the mid game, making sure the board is covered with units that attack and defend from the opponent, giving you plenty of cards that help those low cost units survive and become a real threat to your enemy as the game progresses. However, if you reach the late game, Demacian units can also be of great help, letting you secure the victory after a long war. The region of Noxus has always been perceived as the opposite force from Demacia. It is a ruthless empire that doesn't mind getting their hands dirty to secure their victory in the battlefield. Noxus values power above all, and it doesn't matter where it comes from, as long as you can get the job done. Noxus is an aggressive region in Legends of Frontera, with powerful units with low health that can be considered glass cannons. With the Noxus region you can expect to play dirty and aggressively, you must take any opportunity that presents itself, as the region is not made to survive against late game decks. Noxus has a lot of damaging spells and low cost units that can fill up the board, ensuring that your opponent doesn't have time to rest and has to deal with wave after wave of the power of Noxus. The Freljord is a harsh and unforgiving land mainly because of the lack of resources and the winter-like weather that plagues the region. Think of it as the north from Game of Thrones, but in Runeterra. This region is filled with tribes of warriors and wildlife that is as dangerous as the terrain itself. In Legends of Runeterra, the Freljord is the home of units with large amounts of health and focuses on resource management to ensure that you can survive the winter, aka get to the late game. The Freljord region is centered on surviving and accelerating the late game, rewarding you for overcoming the challenges that your opponent puts you through in the early to mid game. This region has a lot of units with large amount of health and regeneration that can tank the opponent's offensive force, until you bring the hard hitting units that hide in the cold mountains to obliterate the enemy. Piltover and Son are two cities that are stacked in the same area with Son located below Piltover. They both have a similar focus on magic and technology, even though the means on how they acquire it and use it are completely opposite. So it makes sense to have them be together as a single region in Legends of Frontera. Piltover is the city of progress, where the arts and innovation thrive, combining magic and technology together to create Hashtag. Below it, Son could be compared to an industrial site of Piltover, where pollution and poverty strike. However, this doesn't mean Son isn't as great as Piltover, as it has volatile technology and means that are deemed too dangerous for the prestigious city above it. The region of Piltover and Son in Legends of Frontera is spell-based, 
with low cost and low power units that can be modified. This region defies the limits of the game constantly and keeps your opponent on their toes as they don't know what you might hit them with. This region is extremely versatile as it lets you play offensively and defensively which makes it the perfect region to use alongside the others to combine their powers into an impressive deck. When playing with Piltover and Sun, keep the combos flowing and your opponent guessing if they might come out alive from this fight. The region of Ionia is filled with magic and mystical creatures, where people live in scattered settlements across the Ionian archipelago. When thinking of Ionia, you must picture oriental culture but filled with wonder, spirits and magic. I think that is the best way to describe it. Ionia is mostly a peaceful place and its inhabitants are not used to fighting in traditional wars, recurring to magic and other means to defeat their enemies. However, after being invaded by Noxus, this has changed. They are armed and ready to fight, so be prepared to expect the unexpected. In Legends of Frontera, Ionia, alongside Piltover and Son, is one of the most versatile regions available, as it has multiple ways to bend the rules in order to bypass the enemy and avoid any threats that they might impose. Ionia's biggest strengths fall in its spells, as they let you turn the situation in your favor by granting you a lot of options. As a trade-off, most of its units are not that strong, but they have skills that make up for the lack of damage, so don't underestimate them. The Shadow Isles were a thriving land before the Mad King Viego set upon them the reunion, corrupting the land and their inhabitants, who now strike terror upon anyone that dares to venture into the Isles. The Shadow Isles are a great threat to Runeterra, as it's plagued by unspeakable horrors that grow stronger as the years pass. The spirits that inhabit the land are not afraid to make sacrifices to ensure their goals are met, even if it means killing their allies. This land of horrors is one you must be afraid of, since you never know what terror they can unleash upon you. In Legends of Runeterra, the Shadow Isles region gains power by targeting their own ranks, and is the only region that lets you return units from the dead. This region gives you access to powerful and weak units alike, and spells that can inflict damage upon your own ranks to help you grow stronger. Killing your own units and draining your opponent's nexus to heal your own are some of the mechanics that you can expect from the Shadow Isles, as it is a region that thrives in winning in unconventional and unexpected ways. Bilgewater is a city located in the middle of the sea, home to pirates, smugglers and unscrupulous people, a land without rules and with a mixture of creatures set in the Serpent Isles. In Legends of Frontera, the seas and isles of which Bilgewater is part of are paired together under the name of the infamous city. In this region, you can face the dangers of the deep sea, mischievous creatures and pirates that take the law into their own hands. In Legends of Frontera, this region is home to multiple strategies that can be classified as a supporting region that has a lot of synergy with the rest presenting cards with a high-risk, high-reward theme. Its units and spells are diverse, however, there are two branches, sea and land. The cards from the land focus on dealing damage early on random units and stealing cards from the opponent's deck or hand. Meanwhile, the sea's units hold powerful monsters that shine in the late game alongside some squisher and silly creatures that are more early game-based. Since Bilgewater was the first expansion of the game, it is expected to be a variety region, as it was made with all of the other regions' playstyles in mind. The Targon region encompasses the mountain ranges that are near Mount Targon, the highest point in Runeterra, and a place where people are reborn with powers from the stars as a reward for overcoming the challenge of the mountain. Targon is home to two tribes, the Solari, who worship the sun, and the Lunari, worshippers of the moon. These two tribes are locked in an eternal conflict as they see the others as heretics and their enemies. 
As the second expansion of Legends of Frontera, the region of Targon introduced a lot of different playstyles to the game that work well with the other regions. Targon is home to dragons that thrive in the late game, the Lonari and the Solari who thrive in early to mid game, and travelers from the mountain that help each other out in order to achieve their goals. However, the meat of the region is in invoking the power of the stars, bringing them into the board and opening ways to destroy in the late game with powerful units and devastating spells. The desert region of Shurima is home to an ancient civilization that fell, plaguing its land with ruins filled with treasure and secrets to be uncovered. With the return of the Ascended, powerful creatures who transcended their human state, gaining unimaginable powers and the ability to live thousands of years, Shurima is trying to return to its former glory. However, the desert isn't a friendly territory. It's filled with terrors that hide underneath the sand, making the life of nomad tribe difficult as they try to survive under the harsh sun. Shurima was introduced in the latest patch as the third expansion for Legends of Frontera bringing a lot of new mechanics that impact the way you think about the game, breathing new life into your old decks and strategies. After all, the desert is a perfect place to hone your survival skills. As an ancient region that has been given new life, this region is centered around time, accelerating it to help your units and landmarks reach their full potential, multiplying the few resources of the desert to ensure your survival and looking forward predicting which cards you will draw next. Make sure to power up your units, ascend your champions, and use the resources hidden in the sands to surpass your opponent and let them know how dangerous the desert can be. These are all the regions currently available in the game, each of them with their own strengths and weaknesses. None of them are perfect, but they work well alongside each other, so go forth and pick the one that suits you, so you can create the perfect deck and prove that you can become the best player in the game.